So a share of stock technically is, let's see if we can get these to come out in um, order, no. Nope. A share of stock technically is a portion of the company's capital. It's personal property because it's something you carry with you. You're not, uh, it's not real property, obviously. And then a share of stock is a show in action. This is quite useful to remember. And it helps you uh, understand quite a bit about the nature of company law. So show is simply French for thing. As you may know, uh, the, the common law legal system was actually created by conquering French kings, the Norman kings, uh, the Plantagenet uh, kings, uh, beginning with William and in particular Henry II, who set up the first uh, general ire, uh, which was considered to be the common law. And French was the language of courts for five or 600 years. So show is just thing. So this is, means a thing in action as opposed to a thing in possession. If I own a cup, I possess this cup, and it is a thing that I possess. If I have a right, let's say I designed this cup, and I have a design patent on this cup, then I cannot hold the patent in my hand, but I can act on it to receive benefits from it, to sell it, or to stop other people from copying it. And that's the kind of thing that we have in a share of stock. So a share of stock allows the owner to act according to law to defend his or her rights in the company, to receive dividends, to have voting rights, to stop the directors from misbehaving. But it does not allow you to actually go into the company and possess part of the company. So it's, uh, you might think of, say, if you were to own a racehorse, uh, together with 10 other people. Now, if you decided that you needed money, it would probably, you, you understand, it's not going to be possible for you to go to the stall of the racehorse and cut off one-tenth of it and take it home with you. That would destroy the horse and the entire purpose of investing in the horse. It would, it, of course, it would be criminal as well. But still, from an economic point of view, you can see how one does not take away in possession a partial ownership of something like a horse. And the same would occur with a company. If you were to go to the company and take away its offices or part of its offices, some of its intellectual property rights, the company would cease to be effective. And so what you do have instead is an ability to act as the law specifies in order to protect your rights in that company. And the rights that you receive are voting rights, the right to put the company into liquidation under voting, and then to receive something from the company when it is liquidated, provided the creditors have been paid. Rights to receive dividends if the company makes profits, right to re rights to receive information on an annual basis, in particular before the annual meeting, and then rights to sue on behalf of the company, directors if they misbehave, or on behalf of, behalf of yourself, against uh, the directors or the other shareholders if they are conducting the affairs of the manager uh, management of the company in a way which is unfairly prejudicial to your interests, right? So, and I've already mentioned that the share of stock will, is the key to allow you to register as a member, which allows you to become part of the contract referred to as the Articles of Association. So when you're looking at a share of stock, we have a couple of layers of ownership and do not confuse ownership of the share with ownership of the company. When you own a share of stock, you own a certificate, which is evidence that you have this, this incorporeal, this immaterial chosen action, which is a claim on the company, right? So the share is evidence that you have an dematerialized or uncertificated share in the company, ownership of the company. Two levels of property, you own the certificate, and the certificate indicates that you own the share itself, which need not exist in paper. And what you have certificated is a show in action. 
as I said, uh, more and more shares are not certificated in paper, and they can exist in an account in your name, just as your emails or your posts in social media are not printed out and existing in paper, but exist only in a database under your name. Now, the, uh, the flip side of owning the company is to remember that the company, and this is where limited liability comes from, the company is a legal person. The company owns its assets. The company has its own debts. So because the company has its own debts, your liability is limited because not you, but the company are liable. Now, the company also owns its own assets. So let's say you owned the equivalent of 200 million Hong Kong dollars in one certificate of a share of stock in a shipping company, Giant Shipping Limited. You could not simply go to the company, give them your share of stock, and take away a ship. That would not be possible because the company itself owns the ships, and what you have is a show in action giving you voting rights, dividend rights, liquidation rights, litigation rights against the company itself, but you have no claim on the company's assets, or at best an indirect claim, because your claim to dividends and liquidation will depend on the state of the company's assets, okay? So please do, and I think it's useful to memorize, that the share of stock will give you a right to profits that is referred to normally as dividends or distributions of dividends. It will give you a right to collective control. That will be the vote that you cast at the annual meeting for various actions of the company or the election of directors. It will give you the right to exclude. So if someone were to be damaging the company and the directors did not act to prevent them from damaging the company, then you may sue the director on behalf of the company to force the director to either behave properly in protecting the company from third parties or to pay damages to the company for their negligence. And then if the company is wound up and has paid its creditors, you also have a claim to liquidation payments. So shares of stock don't have a lot of requirements, and I'll go through these quickly. If they're not fully paid up, they have to have a distinguishing number, and you can see why that's the case. If you were to invest together with five other people, and two of those people did not fully pay for their shares, you don't want their shares confused with your shares because your shares are fully paid up and have a full claim to dividends and can be transferred fully. And the other shares do not have a full claim because there is money owed on the shares. So they must be distinguished from each other. Companies may not issue stock. So stock, a lot of people become confused with this concept. Please don't. Stock means the capital of the company not divided into equally denominated shares. All right, so imagine you go to Starbucks or Mick Cafe, something along those lines, and you buy a piece of cheesecake. At Starbucks or Mick Cafe, there will be a specific size that the corporation requires the cheesecake to be. And every piece of cheesecake will be similar to every other piece of cheesecake. That is like a share of stock. Every share of stock has a regular size and portion of the overall share capital. If you were to buy a whole cheesecake and go home and share it with three of your friends, you could cut those pieces for you and your friends any size you wanted. 
If one of your friends only wanted a sliver, you give that person 3%, although uh, they are 25% of the group. And if another person wanted a lot, you may give them 40%, although again, they are only 25% of the group. So one share would be 3% of the capital and another 40% of the capital. These are not shares of stock in a regular fashion. They are just referred to as stock because you don't know what size they'll be in. It is irregularly cut portions or quotas of the capital. And this is no longer possible. Uh, it's something that you find in European companies, in private companies. Uh, and it's no longer possible in Hong Kong. Now, companies may no longer issue share warrants, and some, a lot of people are confused. I've actually been with relatively sophisticated lawyers uh, who were confused about share warrants. And it's not that confusing. So share warrant is like a coupon. Uh, it gives you the right to claim something. So if you were going to buy something on sale and uh, you are given a coupon provided that you make payment to collect that thing when it comes in stock next week, then this coupon is a right to receive that thing without any other further duties on your part. That's a warrant. An option is a right to purchase the share of stock at a future date for a specific price. All right, so a warrant is a coupon simply to receive it, the share of stock, without any further performance from you. And an option is a right to purchase the share of stock at a future date, and you will have to make the payment. Okay, so warrants are no longer something that companies can issue. Warrants confuse things because the warrants did not need to be registered in the share register, and so someone might be sitting on uh, 1,000 or 10,000 warrants and then pull them out all at once just before a meeting uh, and take over the company, right? So it, it, it confused things on exactly where the power was distributed in a company and how many shares were outstanding. And that's one of the reasons why uh, share warrants have been eliminated uh, from company issue.